What up, players? It's Wallboss Tay up in this mug. Today we're finishing our cave squig in my uh, concluding series, uh, or the concluding video of my series of appreciation for my buddy Devil's Prodigy. So I'm going to include his channel link below. Check him out, subscribe to him if you haven't already. And yeah, let's go through what colors I used for this squig. So first, Mephiston Red. Then, Evil Sun Scarlet. And then I used Xandri Dust. Ceramite White. Rackheart Flesh. Averland Sunset. Ushabti Bone. And. Serious, you guys, you gotta use this purple. I'm so serious right now. So there you go. The uh, this could actually be considered more than a uh, squig part two. If you want to just paint up your squig, and you've got like 30 of them, the easiest way I would say would be just re-highlight the skin and the bones, and um, and there you go. That would be fine. What I decided to do is have a little bit more fun by painting the belly and uh, the. Uh, the, the white heads, the large warts on this guy's skin. You can even see them if I close up a little bit. Ooh, so gross. And uh, I also used some satin varnish on the gums and the mouth to make him look like he's dripping saliva. So if you have gloss varnish, you can use that too. Uh, but yeah, there you go. I hope you guys enjoy it. And <laughs> I know it's so long. Um, it's such a long process to paint up one squig. But um, pick and choose the techniques that you like, and I hope you enjoy the video. Latest players! Okay, let's get back to painting this squig. The next color we're going to need is... Mephiston Red. And you're going to want to be prepping a little bit of Bugman's Glow. So just have those two colors set aside. We're going to start with Mephiston Red, though. And what I'm going to be doing is highlighting all the most upturned areas. Hope you're all doing well out there. I just finished reading the book Vulcan Lives, and uh, I'm going to definitely be doing an unbooking of it later. I actually got it as an ebook though for my my iPad Mini. Very convenient. It uh, syncs with iCloud, so. I didn't realize it, but when I opened iBooks on my iPhone, I didn't have my iPad with me. I opened my iPhone and it was right there. Uh, you just pull it up and it lands on the same page and everything. So really convenient, very cool. Great book though. I don't know if any of you have read the... Probably an Orcs and Goblins player. If you're watching this video, I don't know if any of you have read the Skarsnik book. There's a book that came out about the Night Goblin Warlord Skarsnik. And uh, I've read some good things about it. I've read some reviews. And um, one of my friends who played Orcs and Goblins just kind of bought it on a whim. And he was like, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's not often that a novel is written about 
a uh, you know an orcs and goblins character where you kind of get to know them a little bit more than just smash the yumis. I'm also kind of in the middle of reading the Hammer and Bolter Volume Two or Second Omnibus. And that's a great book, too, of short stories. All right, when you get to the legs, this is when you're going to need to kind of focus on the, mus the muscles, the muscles. So try not to paint. Like the legs, the, the, the musculature is vertical, going up and down, so I'm, I don't paint horizontally, I paint following the lines of the body. That way if you get any paint strokes, they will kind of adhere to and follow and just create more of an aesthetically pleasing look when it dries. So I'm following the lines of the leg, following the lines of the leg. Kind of remind me of frogs, these squigs. I like the little knee there. So now I'm going to take my Budman's Glow and I'm going to mix it with my Mephiston Red. So you want to thin this down on your, on your wet palette and you're going to come up with a kind of pinkish color. going to paint onto his underbelly. Fo again, following the lines of the stretched belly. I got something like that. kind of like a, a transition into the pink. Next we're going to do straight Bugman's Glow. So just Bugman's Glow all by itself. And just doing the same thing as we did before. Kind of starting off at the center and feathering my way out to the sides rather than starting at the sides and working my way to the center. So you want that mix of Bugman's Glow and Mephiston Red to be further out and then this Bugman's Glow straight all by itself. Kind of closer in towards the center of the belly. back here transitions as much as possible. When you're painting something with 
uh, something organic at least, so not a space marine, but something that is primarily one color. Whenever you do a, uh, a shift of that color, like this underbelly, you want smooth transitions between the colors. Okay, <clears throat> the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take Kislev flesh now. And we're going to mix the Kislev flesh with the Budman's Glow. So you're going to get a slightly yellowish uh, pink. And with this, we are going to very carefully, after we thin it down and it's only on the edge of our paintbrush, to very carefully just paint here in the center. And we'll feather the edges so you don't get this color anywhere except right at the front and at the middle. Kind of showing where the, the belly of the squig is at its most distended. So this is different from the Games Workshop squig colors. They just have a red squig with, with highlights, but I think this uh, is a little bit more fun. More like a toad. Now there are other things you can do. You can add like stripes going down the back of the squig or stuff like that. You don't have to, but that's, a, that's an option or uh, spots, you could add modeled spots onto your squig. I kind of just like this, this pale uh, stomach. All right, so we're gonna let that dry for a bit. We're gonna come back to it and uh, continue with the claws. So with the claws, I'm going to Take some Xandri dust and we're going to paint up the highlights of this guy's claws here. So I'm going to start from the front and I'm going to work my way back. Try to hit like the the highest parts of the claws. And when you get to the back, try to feather your brush strokes so that they do not um so that they don't really clog up the detail between where the claw meets the what we call it toenail or where the claw meets the uh, skin. So you can see I'm starting from the front and brushing my way towards the back. And give that a second to dry. <clears throat> While we do, we're gonna take Evil Sun Scarlet and a little bit more highlighting on the back of the squig. Evil Sun Scarlet is a very bright red. If Mephiston Red is like the bright red 
for the base colors and Evil Sun Scarlet is as red as you can get in the uh, layer paints. It's got a little bit of an orange tinge to it, which is uh, good. It's a nice natural progression of the color of the color wheel. Um, so, so it matches very nicely. highlight so you don't want too much of it going over the Mephiston red base coat. Um, you want enough that the eye will notice the highlight and the contrast in the, in the depth with the shading and the base color underneath. Especially when we get to the front lip, because the mouth is the most prominent area on a squig. You want to make the highlights and the detail on the mouth as sharp and clean as possible. So we're paying special attention to the lips. Just follow the line of the muscles. I love squeaks. I hope they never get rid of them in the orcs and goblins lists and such. Yeah, like I said in the last video, they're kind of iconic to the Warhammer universe. Like Night Goblins and Sigmar, it's like something that no other gaming universe out there has. I love that little toad belly he has. Alright, as a final um, highlight to the, to the red, this is an optional step you don't have to take, but I kind of like it. We're going to take Wild Rider Red, and we're going to add this to our Evil Sun Scarlet. Now Wild, Wild Rider Red, it says it's red, but it's really, it's, it's really not, it's orange. It is as orange of a red as you can get. So when you mix it in with Evil Sun Scarlet, it's gonna match really well. Because this is already veering into another color on the uh, rainbow, when we use this color, we wanna be very careful and sparing with it. Otherwise, our red squig will look orange instead. So using highlight and focus, I'm using it to create stretch marks along the mouth to make it look like the squig's mouth is unnaturally large. I do that by painting vertically down the sides and following the, uh, the edge of the mouth as much as possible.
So you really don't need too much paint for this. You're basically just painting the most raised areas. Here's something else you can do. You can take your Kislev flesh that we painted for his belly and you can mix it in with the Wild Rider Red and create a little bit of a stretched and bloodless lip kind of thing. So that's what I'm going to do. And you see, I thinned it down in my wet palette, so it's really very thin. You only just get the illusion of the orange color underneath. These are organic creatures at the top we're just going to try to ring the uh, edges of the lips with this pale flesh color we're gonna take serious purple I'm so serious you guys you guys I'm so serious right now we're gonna highlight up these gums this is kind of like a squig master class <laughs> I didn't realize when painting it that it would take long but really like I said you don't have to spend this much time on your squigs but this is more for if you want to put the time and effort into it or you know, if you're watching this right now just because you're bored and you want to get painting on your own stuff and you're tired of listening to death metal or whatever so thank you for for playing this video for so long I can't imagine that there are many people who would care to listen to um, listen to me talk and watch me paint a squig, which is yeah that seems kind of ridiculous to me. But uh, thank you, and I appreciate very much your viewership. All right, so serious purple, we're adding in uh, Rakarth flesh to the serious purple. And where is it, where is it, where is it? The rack art flesh is going to give you a nice subtle highlight. So you mix your rack art flesh with your serious purple and uh, it's not, it's not so yellow of a bone color. Like Xandri dust is a little bit more yellow so it's, it's a good highlight for the talons. 
before the teeth, which we're about to get to. is a very nice bright purple color. There you go. So you want to, want to wash off your brush, we're going to use Rackard. Oops. And then we're going to use Rackard Flesh again, and this time we're going to use it for the claws. Again, just like we did with Sandry Dust, we're going to start at the tip, and work our way to the back. Start at the tip, work your way to the back. When you get to the back, try and leave a little bit of that Zandri dust in the crevice. That shadow right before the, what would you call that, the cuticle of the nail? That little area. I really like Xandri Dust though, or uh, Xandri Dust as a, as a talon or nail color is very cool. It looks like a hard yellow, like, like an old, like a toenail on an old person. Just like old and strong. The uh, rack art flesh just kind of highlights that a little bit. Okay, then you're going to take your, your rack art flesh and you are going to make sure that it's uh, you don't have too much on your brush. You don't want it to be watery. You want just a little bit because you're going to highlight up the teeth. So the teeth were shaded with known oil, which means that any stray rack heart flesh you had earlier gets kind of covered up. So you want to make sure that that's why it's really important you don't have too much on your brush. Next, we are going to take our next highest bone color, either Ushapti Bone or Screaming Skull. And we are going to, oh my gosh, where did mine go? Here we go. I'm going to use Ushapti Bone. Both of these are nice and and bony colored, like ivory, yellow ivory, off-white, off kind of like a creamy color. And again, I wiped off a lot of it. Now I'm just kind of dragging the flat of the brush. I'm not, I'm not uh, stabbing at the teeth with the tip of my brush, because if I do that, the paint will go into all the crevices. I'm using the flat of my brush. Last thing is I'm going to mix Ceramite White. You can also use White Scar or uh, Oath One Gray. Ceramite White is just what I happen to have right on hand. I'm going to mix it with my Ushapti Bone. So you're going to get a, a white, a whitish creamy, creamyish, creamyish color. And that is going to be our final highlight for the teeth and for the talons. If you make a mistake at any time, just go back over it with known oil. Okay, then I'm going to start from about halfway down the claw or the talon, and I'm just going to feather, feather around the edges towards the front. So, so take notice of how I'm doing this. I'm starting at the center, working my way towards the front, and then I am feathering this white color towards the back and trying to make the uh, brush strokes blend as much as possible. This is why you're going to need to have a wet palette. If you just did Ceramite White straight out of, straight out of the pot, 
mixed it with the um, Ushanti bone, then you uh, the resulting concoction would be pretty thick. And when you put it on, it would get all gloopy. You want it to be as thin, as transparent, uh, well, maybe not transparent, but you want it to be as thin and easy to manipulate as possible. Yeah, if you ever feel like your claws are too white towards the front, then just go back over them with Rackarth Flesh. In this case, white is the highest highlight. It's the brightest highlight, so I'm gonna try and get as much as I can out of the highlight before I go back and try to fix it with the Rackarth Flesh. Yeah, I kind of like it. I don't think it's too thick anywhere. Maybe this one spot on the left or the right talon here. If you're fixing uh, and redressing a problem, then just take the color that you're fixing with, in this case, Rackard Flesh, and paint from the back where it's safe towards the front. If you start towards the front and pull back, then you're not going to know if you uh, hit the problem or not. Start from the back, work your way front. And the thinner you make your Rackard flesh, the, the more it'll blend into the ceramite white. Boom, boom, boom. I should label this Squig Masterclass. <clears throat> Next we're going to take Averland Sunset. And we're going to mix in a little bit of Ceramite White. If you also have Evil Suns or Flash Gits Yellow, I think it's called, you can use that. Uh, we're making a bright yellowish color. We're gonna make this the eyeballs. Okay. I'm gonna take um, 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 um. Bugman's Glow. I think we're getting just to the end here, folks. And take Bugman's Glow, and we are going to paint up the various warts and pimples on our squig's body. After you've done that, make sure you get all of them. Sometimes there's some sneaky ones that hide on in the butt area. Mistake there. Okay, once you've done all of that, you're going to take uh, Averlin Sunset. <laughs> You're gonna mix it into your Bugman's Glow. It's gonna give you a kind of sickly, like orangey, almost pus like color. Oh, master. 
reminds me of high school. All the other kids would tease me because I had terrible acne. I'm sorry to hear that, Igor. Oh, made a mistake there. So if you make a mistake, just clean off your brush, drag it back through, see how much of that paint you can pick up with your brush tip, and then we'll go back over if there's anything inside. I was able to pick up most of that paint, so we're okay. Ceramite white, you can also use white scar or uh, old one gray. Oh, master, please don't do it. Do do it. That's right, Igor. We're making white heads. Oh, oh that's so disgusting. <laughs> oh my gosh. It is disgusting. Looks like they're gonna pop at any moment. And just really, really easily just, uh, you know, just brushing ever so lightly the tip of my paintbrush on it. You don't want it to look white. That's the thing about white heads. They, uh, the white is really just like the cap, right? And then you want that kind of like sickly yellowish color under the, underneath. And there we have it. There is your squig. Now, if you want to, uh, you could add some like gloss varnish to the gums uh, to show that its mouth is is wet and uh, all saliva. -y. Do I want to do that? Oh, I'm going to be sick. Yeah, why not? So I've got some. Vallejo satin varnish. It's kind of close to uh, gloss varnish. You can use uh, Art Coat from Games Workshop as a, as a gloss varnish. Or uh, Vallejo makes gloss varnish. Anything that you have that says gloss varnish will work if you can paint it on. If it's a spray, it's not going to work as much. And all we're doing is just dragging that satin varnish across the gums and over the lip. You can also paint it into the sides, sides of the mouth where the where there's some space between the teeth. Uh, you try not to get the teeth though. You don't want the teeth to glisten. You just want the the inside of the mouth to glisten. And there you have it. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, I'm gonna base this guy up and then um, wrap it up here and yeah you've seen at the beginning how this guy looks hope all of your squigs look good uh, again don't forget to go to Devil's Prodigy if you haven't already and subscribe to him for some awesome orc and goblin-ness orky goblin-ness goblin <laughs> oh monster you need to take a nap